You ever wonder what the process is of slicing prints for a resin printer? Well, let's try it and see how it works out. Alright, first thing you have to do is open the software that comes with your resin printer or the one they suggest. Mine is a Creality LD001 and it comes with 3D Creator Slicer. So here it is open and now we need to add a model. So let's add, let's find something I need to print. Uh, I need to print some more rings for Murph. So let's do that. Alright, so here's my ring and I brought it in. Uh, I don't want to print it like this. So let's arrange it so that we can print it like I want to. So we're going to turn and burn that way. Now, I need to make sure that I try to get this kind of sort of level. And to me, it's easier if you, if you get that top line laid down, then you can do it just right and get it straight up and down. There we go. So now we have it that way. So now I'm going to spin it till it's looking directly from the side. And that's all there is to it. Now we have the model situated so that I can get the most out of my print bed. But on resin printers, as with all printers, you need supports. And you have to remember that on this resin printer, it prints upside down. So the bed goes down into the liquid and moves up. So this part would actually be upside down. So what we have to do is make supports that support this ring. And you don't want it stuck directly to the bed. So you need to go to supports. And I like to use auto supports to add my supports and then remove what I don't want. So, well, First, I need to scale this model because I have already printed a bunch of these. So I'm going to actually go in here and change this so that it is at 19. I'm going to take it down 2 millimeters. Hit enter and that will reduce everything. So now I've reduced it to 19 millimeters, which should make it about a size 10 or 11, I think. I'm guessing, I'm, I'm totally spitballing here. I'm gonna print some and we'll see how it turns out. So now I can go back over to supports. And basically I'm using the cone, a radius of 0.5 millimeters, a length of two millimeters. One important one that a lot of people fail to use is the up to floor height. And what that does is it raises your model off of the bed by this amount. Now you may think, well, five millimeters, that's a long way up. Yes, it is, but if you get your supports too short, they will they can actually fuse together and they're very difficult to cut off of your model cleanly. With them being this long, they'll have a nice long cone with a small point left. So let's go ahead and auto add supports. Now, see, I've got all these supports on the inside and I know that I don't need these because as you can see, this curve is one solid surface. So as it comes up, it's going to have support material it doesn't need these supports that are in here. So I'm going to go back over to supports to my delete settings and I'm going to delete all of these in, internal ones. All right, so now I'm left with just a base support. If you'll notice, I got these over here don't really need these either. So I'm going to trim them down as much as possible and still give good support with the ring off of the base. All right, so now we've got supports. Now let's go in and do the magic. We go back over and we select move. We put it where we think we want it. And then we're going to duplicate. All right, so now I, that may be enough. I'm not sure. Let's see if we can arrange these on here for printing. All 
So now, there we go. We have sliced, or we have set up for slicing. These are ready to go to the printer. So now we're going to slice. This is going to ask me to save the file. And I'm going to save this. I'm going to save it. Say it's a size 11 because the last ones were size 13. And I went down by 2 millimeters. So I'm going to hit save. Now my slicing window pops up. And I hit slice. As you can see right here, this has to take four passes at the slice. So let's wait till it's done. All right, it finished slicing, so let's take a look at it. Let's step up through it just to make sure we don't have any unsupported print parts. It'll change. Give it time. There, you can start seeing it move. You're getting thinner on your support and then your ring starts to build in. And as long as we don't see any dots of plastic that are just out by themselves without having a base, see those come in but there's a base underneath them. So those are all coming just like they're supposed to be. Then the top layer comes in and boom, we're done. So now what I need to do is I need to send this to the printer. Here's another thing you need to pay attention to. You can do this or you can on the, my printer. At print time, it will ask you, what do you want the first layer time to be? I'm going to go ahead and set it to 90 seconds because I know that's what my printer takes. I'm going to set this to 13 seconds because I know that's a good time for my printer. And then I'm going to send it to the printer. Okay, it's made it to the printer. So now that it's on the printer, all we have left to do is print, clean, and cure, and those will be in another video. This was just for slicing and sending to the printer. All right, so there we have it. I mean, that is it. You select your model, you arrange it on the build plate, you add supports, then you duplicate it to fill up your build area, unless you just need one of them, or it takes up the build area for one item. Um, because the timing, the cool, that is the cool thing about resin printers is one item takes as much as the entire build plate. Now, you know, you add height then sure, but one item at one height, same amount of time as five of items, same height. So might as well add as many as you can, but there you go. There you have it. That's the way you slice for a resin printer. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't leave us a comment, let us know why. Remember, treat each other as you want to be treated and the world will be a better place. I'm Walter and you've been watching The Country Club.